I had an idea that we could start a TV distribution and production company. Um, I had no experience whatsoever in that space at all. Um, but we had a vision and an idea around extreme sports and the TV, f the fact that TV was growing in this area and these sports were growing in this area. So, um, yeah, what happened was myself and a friend, uh, we basically, in a room about the size of this stage, um, outside my parents' house um, in East Anglia, we, uh, we set up two desks and said, right, what are we going to do? And actually, the vision and the idea came, originally came from Mark McCormack's TWI and IMG company. And so um, what that business does is it manages athletes on one side and it does television production and distribution on the other. Um, so we looked at that business and we said, okay, athlete management, real pain, a lot of egos involved, running that, not interesting. But the TV side, we were, we were enthralled by, excited by, and um, naively... I think, or just innocent at that moment in time in terms of there were no, the barriers to entrance, the kind of the fear that you kind of go through if you're going to do a startup just wasn't there because I was 24 ultimately. Um, and so we basically, two phones, and we just started ringing, went to these TV, TV distribution shows uh, internationally. Straight away we were thinking international. And we, I just read everything I could on the market. How does TV distribution work? And actually originally I wanted to make programs but actually realised that nobody would give us a commission because we had no track record, no one would pay us any money to actually make anything. So I thought, well, we can sell, so let's just see who's made stuff already and see if we can actually start representing them. So we basically started ringing up different production companies all over the world, Australia, America, anybody, anybody producing a snowboard show, a mountain bike show, whatever type of sports show that, that we could get our hands on, all sports-focused, and that my, my passion... Is it, it comes from skiing, from snowboarding, from windsurfing, from kite surfing, from sailing. So I, I was really trying to mix that mix of business and uh, business and passion. And we basically put our heads down and we just focused in 100% on building this TV distribution business. And interestingly, in the market, no one else was doing this in the TV market. So there were big companies selling Formula One. Well, Formula One was selling Formula One. TWI would sell the Olympics. FIFA had a company that was selling uh, all the football rights and so on and so forth. And we were this... I remember rocking up, first trade show, little stand, big, big companies around us. And, and we basically just created this niche where any TV channel on the planet thought, I want some extreme sports. They'd call us. And so after, very, very quickly, within a year and a half, two years... We were selling into 80 countries and um, distributing content from all these different production companies from all over the world. And what would happen was a production company might make a series of TV shows for that specific country. And then we would then take that and then sell it on their behalf and take a commission 30, 50 percent, depending on what the number was. Built that business out, a thousand hours of programming. And the real breakthrough moment um, was 2008. Um, I had an idea. I thought, you know what? How do we take our six-person team turning over two, two and a half million of turnover? How do we take this business to the next level? And I thought, you know what? Let's launch a TV channel. Everybody in the team, yeah, what are you smoking? <laughs> what are you on? You know, usual kind of, you know, questions. And we put a plan together. No experience again, no track record. Once again, probably the, na the naivety of youth kind of working in terms of no barriers to entrance. And also, it was a great idea. You know, we'd looked at the market and understood. We did believe that if we launched a channel around extreme sports, that this would be successful. We'd done a, we did a little bit, a tiny bit of market research. Not really very much, if I'm honest. And we went out around, spoke to many bankers, VCs, lawyers, many, many people. And eventually we bent, bumped into Europe's largest cable company, a company called UPC. And they, equivalent of NTL or Telewest or Virgin Media that it is now, but in Europe, much bigger than them, very visionary CEO, a guy called Mark Schneider. And um, he said, we're launching six channels. We love the idea. You've got the content. We've got the cash. We've got the infrastructure. And we negotiated a joint venture with this huge, huge organization, and I negotiated incredibly hard. We realized at that moment there was no way they could, run, they could launch this channel without us because basically we'd exclusively wrapped up and held the control. We didn't own all of it. We owned some, 
the rights to this programming. So if they wanted to launch this channel and this idea, they had to run it through us. So they put in 25 million for a startup TV network, and we, and we managed to negotiate basically 50% of the equity with no cash going in. I spent a year working that joint venture agreement, just working the agreement. I knew every page of it back to front, which I'll come back to, maybe come back to a little bit. Launched the channel May 1999 out of Holland, because that's where the hub was. And I ran that business as CEO, and we just did country after country after country launch, one after the other. In the TV channel world, it's easier to launch countries. You put the satellite feed, you put, build the channel, you put it up on a satellite feed, you can then feed it down into the different distributors. Our customers were the cable and satellite platforms across Europe, so the equivalent of Sky or NTL um, across, all over the place. The interesting one was, I used to tell my mates, we're, long, we've got, we're running this channel, we're involved in this channel, and I'm like, yeah, re yeah, really believe you. UK for us was country number 19. Yeah, so how international, and talking about how thinking about international, it's because also we'd been selling programs before internationally. So really, really interesting from that respect. Amazing run, amazing success, a lot of EasyJet flights, some amazing, you know, roll into a country, negotiate a contract, three months later go back to a huge launch party with people I've never met before and just the PR agency and the media guys had all lined up and, and just, uh, and very young, I mean, I was 27, 28 at the time. And did that, rolled it out, I mean, the TV channel now sits in 68 countries, 40 million homes. Uh, and, and really started to build the brand that, that, that really has become, well, is, is the extreme brand. Unfortunately, our partner then went into Chapter 11. Cable companies, they overexpanded, so on and so forth. Big, big company called Liberty Media, very large media owner out of America, came in and took them out, took, basically took out the business. Um, and eventually came knocking on the door and said, you know, we want to buy all minority shareholdings out of everything, that, or any shareholding at all, it wasn't minority, we were 50-50, out of anything we're doing. And we said we don't want to sell. It got really ugly at that point. All the guys I'd been dealing with at UPC all got fired. Not, not a particularly nice bunch of people got put in place in terms of the board. And any angle they could do to screw me, and us as a team, they were using <coughs> They had teams and teams of lawyers looking at the agreement. Went to arbitration three times. We won three times. Thank God I had the arbitration clause in there. Yeah, just if we hadn't got that agreement right, we'd have been completely, completely nailed. Anyway, eventually it got worse and worse and worse. And I eventually <coughs> said, right, you want to buy the channel? We want to buy the brand. That freaked them out a little bit, actually. It has to be said. They went off, thought about that. And eventually... We did a deal where we bought the other 50% of the brand that we didn't own off them, and they bought the other 50% of the channel off us. And so I ended up, and this is 2007, 2006, 2007, I ended up, received a reasonably big X million pound check in at that point, ended up owning 100% of the brand and having a TV channel that was marketing this brand in 60 countries sitting there ready to go. We'd also, at that point, started to look at, and we had already set up certain businesses in certain areas and, and started to look at other categories. So we'd set up a drinks business, operating, distributing, managing a drinks business. We'd set up an online, all using the extreme brand, set up an online mail order retail business. And all of these businesses were starting to grow, but still very small. I actually made a mistake at that point. I didn't deep think through what we were doing hard enough. I didn't think the strategy through of what we were doing. I didn't think through, we've got this brand in all these countries. Great, you can do a lot of startups. You've got this brand and so on and so forth. But when you do a startup, unless you've got huge amounts of capital to put behind it, the chances are you're only going to be working the brand and the value from that brand in one specific country. So about a year and a bit ago, uh, I met with a, uh, a German guy who's 49, ex-banker, um, been out of banking for about uh, 10 years, completely opposite to me, completely, totally and utterly opposite from a character perspective. Deep thinker, strategy, why they build great cars to a degree, do you know what I mean, in terms of personality-wise. And we got together and ultimately uh, he, he just said, 
I want to come and work with you, and sat in our office for two months, just understanding what we were doing, looking at it, no, not, not paying him anything, he, just, he was interested to invest, and we obviously knew this. And so we ended up um, doing a deal about 12 months ago, where he bought, in, bought a minority shareholding in the company. And, sorry, one thing I should point out, when, the, when we bought out the TV channel, sorry, when we sold the television channel, at that moment, I bought out all my shareholders and went back to 100% ownership in, in the business. Um, so he, he bought into the business, and we basically, over the last 12 months, have done about deep, deep research into a number of different things. And so my first kind of point on this is just researching your market. So what we did was, the first thing we said, how big are extreme sports? Because everybody thinks it's a niche. So we sat down and we beavered through, working through, what is the turnover of every business in the extreme sports sector? Yeah? And once you start adding it up, it's 100 billion plus. Red Bull on its own is doing 5.3 billion at retail. Quicksilver, 5.2 billion at retail. So you start to understand, you then get into participation levels in terms of how many people are doing these, these sports. And ultimately, what we've done is we've, we've, we've driven through, worked through that detail and understood that actually these markets are very, very large. And so ultimately what we've now done is said we don't want to be in, oper in, in, an, oper in an operational business model in any sector at all. So actually decided we're selling off all our operational companies and shifting that to a licensing model. And so we've moved our company from an operational business in multiple different areas into a licensing business. And when you then start drilling into understanding how licensing works and really how to think more strategically than, say, Walt Disney works or whoever it may be, obviously working with a, with a media or a sports brand, and you start thinking okay, we're going to do 20-year deals with big, big partners and find and so seek out, really, really, really look for gaps in the market. It's amazing what you can come up with in terms of the gaps. But that process, I'm, I'm running short of time now. So, so, but really, really working that process and then understanding and looking to be you know, a really, really leading, um, leading licensing and, and brand management business. Cool. Thank you very much.